worship, our online worship service on Facebook Live. We are going to start our service this morning with our congregational hymn, Pass Me Not, O Gentle Savior. If you know it, sing with us. Verse 1, Pass Me Not. Because you, God, you 
God Almighty and your God Almighty self. So we just want to thank you right now. Oh Lord, we want to lift up before this morning our pastor. We thank you for giving him family mercies. We come this way once again. Oh God, we thank you for the innovation, oh God, of our team here this morning, oh God, that we can, oh God, bring this service to uh, sick and our shut in to those that are sheltering in place. Lord, so we ask your blessing upon our Christ and our family. We ask your blessing upon families all throughout this city and this state and nation, oh God. Oh Lord, we lift up before you your people this morning. Then, Lord God, we we'll lift up before you those that don't know you. Those that don't know you in the pardon of their sins, oh God. We just ask that you grant them one more opportunity, oh God, to get to know your son, Jesus Christ, and invite him into their, homes, into their lives, oh God. Lord, we just want to thank you. We want to praise you. Lord, we lift up before you our nation, oh God. Lord, we ask your blessing upon those that infected and affected by this uh, yeah. virus that's going around. Lord God, you know all of our hearts, oh God. So we just want to ask you, oh God, to lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us, oh God. Speak to us, oh God. Lord God, speak to the leadership of our nation, oh God. Speak to the leadership of our state, oh God, in our city. Then, Lord God, we ask your blessing for and upon our team here at Christ Temple, oh God. Lord, we don't take this lightly, oh God. Lord, we are not here to show off, oh God, but we come to give the name of praise and glory, right. glory and the honor. And Lord, we know there are many brothers and sisters that would want to be here, yeah. but they can't. So yeah. we just ask your blessing upon them. Bless us, your people, this day, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We thank God. We thank our Deacon Knight for that invocation prayer. Again, let me greet each and every one of those who are watching us over Facebook Live this morning. We know that there are some of you, many of you, who would be here if you could, amen? And we uh, want to thank you for worshiping with us. My hope is that you're not just watching us in the background as you're carrying on with your normal day activities. My prayer is that you are actually setting aside time this morning. We're asking and hoping and praying that you have set aside time to actually worship with us, that you are worshiping with us, and you are going to praise God with us, you're going to worship God with us, that is our prayer this morning, amen, I believe that God is still in control, I believe that God is still on the throne, amen, and I believe that God will still have the last say. And I just wanted to personally thank the small team that is here at Christ Temple this morning. Many of you will not see. They will be behind the cameras. I want to thank God for them who came out and made sure that we did and had everything necessary to make sure we could stream this morning. I thank God for our musician that is here this morning, our brother C.D. Hawkins. We thank God for him coming out to make sure that there is some musical accompaniment this morning, amen, as we continue to give God praise, amen. We won't be before you long. The plan is that we are here for about an hour, and then we can move on about our day. We know that there's a lot going on in the world, and Christ Temple Baptist Church is seeking to move and work in uh, agreement with the local, and state, and federal government. We are making sure that we follow these mandates, which suggest that we do not have gatherings of 50 or over, and at the same time, we maintain safe social distance within uh, at least six feet of each other, amen? So I wanted to make sure that we put that out there. We pray for all our members, again, who are not, uh, may not be sick with this particular virus, but we want to pray for all our members who are going through had a tough week, and we're praying that this service can provide you with the strength necessary to move on a little more. Amen? At this time, we're going to have a selection. Amen? We are going to sing a song, and I'm praying that those who are out there, if you know the word, join in with us. Amen? I believe you can feel your energy. We're going to sing, God has smiled on me. know it, join in and sing with us, because we still believe that God is in control.
the, brass, the basin also that Solomon had made was not able to receive the burnt offering and the meat offering and the fat. Verse 8, also at the same time, Solomon kept the feast seven days, and all Israel with him, a very great congregation from the from entering of Hamath into the river of Egypt. And in the eighth day, they made a solemn assembly, for they kept the dedication of the altar seven days, and the feast seven days. And on the three on the three and twentieth day of the seventh month, he sent the people away into their tents, glad and merry and hard for the goodness that the Lord had shown unto David and to Solomon and to Israel, his people. Thus Solomon finished the house of the Lord and the king's house and all that came of Solomon. Bear with me for a second. It's all right. Got to work these gloves on, David. They're not worth it to me. <laughs> okay, into the house that came into Solomon's heart to make in the house of the Lord and in his own house. He prophesied, he prophesied effectively. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to divide the land, or if I send pestilence among my people. And this is my favorite verse right here out of all the Bible. If my people, which are called by my name, shall yeah. humble themselves and pray, and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then yeah. will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and will heal the land. Now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend unto the prayers that is made in this place. And that's the end of the scripture. Second Chronicles first, chapter 7 verses 1 through 15. Thank God for the reading of his word. God bless you all. Amen, amen. We thank God, Deacon, for that word. We thank God for that scripture, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 15. Amen. Amen. It's almost time to get into the word. Amen. We're going to have one more song before we get into the word at this time. Amen. But we thank God for what God is doing. Even in this moment, we thank God for what God is doing. If you're at home, if you're watching and you know this, then you know this song, We Need to Hear From You. We ask that you sing along with us. Amen. This is worship service. Worship with us as we sing together. We 
Amen. Give a reverence to God who is still and always will be the head of my life. We thank God for his greatest gift, his only begotten son, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I want to also again thank the small team that is here this morning to ensure that we were able to live stream this service to all of our members, friends, and visitors who may be watching us on Facebook Live this morning. I don't want to keep you long. I just want to speak with you for a short time the message that God has given me this week, and I believe that as we listen to different services and hear different uh, sermons across the nation, that I'm sure sermons will all have a similar theme today. But I just want to reiterate some of those verses that were lifted up earlier by our deacon knight. Second Chronicles chapter 7. And I'm going to start at the 13th verse. And I'm going to read from the New Living Translation this morning. Our deacon knight read it from the King James Version earlier. And it reads this way. Second Chronicles chapter 7 beginning at verse 13. At times I might shut up the heaven so that no rain falls, or command grasshoppers to devour your crops, or send plagues among you. Then, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and restore their land. My eyes will be open and my ears attentive to every prayer made in this place. Amen. And I like to use for a subject this morning. It took a virus. Amen. It took a virus. Amen. Again, for those watching, I just want to assure you that we here, the small group that are here at Christ Temple Baptist Church, we are, it's only about seven or eight of us, amen, and we are working with the CDC and the local, state, and federal government mandates. We are all six feet away from each other, amen. We are maintaining our social distance. Again, I just would like to thank the team that is here this morning. Thank you, amen. It took a virus. This is an unprecedented an unprecedented time. The pandemic of COVID-19, otherwise known as coronavirus, has literally gripped the globe and taken the world by storm. Over 200,000 cases and 9,000 deaths worldwide. This disease has been discovered in about 100 and over 170 countries and territories and it is reported to be way more contagious than the flu. Amen. In this country, almost 8,000 uh, cases of, of COVID-19 uh, and over 140 deaths. And, and by the time you hear this, the numbers have probably increased significantly. It has changed the way we go about our everyday lives, amen? amen. This pandemic has caused a sudden change to our everyday lifestyle like nothing else I've ever seen in my lifetime. And, 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 and for me, I know I have been in my home for multiple days straight. I was in my home straight through from last Sunday afternoon until early uh, Thursday afternoon. I was in my home and when you go out, there's a promotion of social distancing to prevent the catching and the spreading of this disease. Masks and gloves that used to cost 80 cents are now four to twenty dollars. They're being worn by folks all in public, and all the things that were once considered a normal way of life have gone away. Amen. This pandemic has brought about a new normalcy in our world. And I am one that believes that God is in the midst of all things. I believe that God is always seeking our attention. I believe God always wants us to move in God's will and in God's way. God will bless us when we are in agreement with God's will and 
God will punish us when we are not in agreement with God's will. So what I'm most interested in, in the midst of all of this, is what is God saying? In the midst of all the mandates, in the midst of all the recommendations, in the midst of all the daily press conferences, I am struggling and I want to know and I am trying to hear what is God saying to us? What is the spiritual meaning behind this pandemic? What is the spiritual meaning behind this plague? What is the spiritual meaning behind disasters such as COVID-19? When we look at the Old Testament Bible, there are several places where, uh, where God threatens God's people with, with a plague or a disaster if they had been disobedient. That's right, that's right. The first mention of a plague in the Bible is mentioned in Genesis chapter 12, verse 17, when the Pharaoh of Egypt tried to take Abram's wife, Sarah, for himself. He realized that Abram had lied to him about who Sarah was. And in fact, Sarah was indeed Abram's wife. And the plague was sent, and that is what conveyed to the Pharaoh that taking Sarah as a wife was the wrong move to make. Amen. We are all familiar with the ten plagues that we find in the book of Exodus. The Bible tells us that because Egypt would not let the nation of Israel go free, that God had to send plagues upon that nation. The book of Numbers tells us of a time in chapter 11, while on their way to the promised land, after God had sent his people, his people, uh, an abundance of quail meat for food, that they began to gorge and be greedy on this meat. And as a result, God had struck them with a plague. These are just some examples of plagues that are spoken of throughout the Old Testament. And if we're to find anything in common with these plagues, what we find in common is that it is a response from God after disobedience or after acting in a way that is not of God. A plague is sent down on the people of Korah and Dothan and Abram when they uh, rebelled against Moses' leadership. The book of Numbers in chapter 16 tells us of that story and they tell us approximately 14,700 people died of a plague that was sent from God. And what we do see is despite all of the tragic circumstance, God is still almighty and sovereign and in control. So I just want to reiterate that point to all those who are watching this morning, that despite the tragic circumstances that we are now dealing with and that we are now faced with, I want to reassure somebody out there that God is still sovereign and God is still in control. Amen? We must remember that whenever God brings forth disasters, natural disasters, plagues, pandemics, the end goal is never just to punish God's children, but the end goal is for us, God's children, to reconcile ourselves back to God. Repentance and restoration is ultimately God's desire of us when God decides that it is fit to punish us. And our desire must always be God. Our needs must always be God. Our wants should always be God. And when we begin to desire, when we begin to need, and when we begin to want outside of that which is God-centered and God-focused, when we begin to want and need those things outside of that, then we run the risk of facing God's wrath. Amen. Many are trying to figure out where this coronavirus had initiated from. Many folks want to know where this virus started. Many folks want to know who is responsible for this current pandemic. There are many who are trying to answer those questions on, on a physical level, and there are still a great many folks who are trying to figure out those answers, and, and I don't know find, what finding out those answers will do. I don't know, maybe it will help us learn how to better contain uh, this, this pandemic, but for me, I'm wondering and I'm concerned 
but about the spiritual meaning behind this virus. Earlier this week, somebody asked me, when do you think things will get back to normal? And I thought to myself, and I wondered, and I pondered, and, and, and the response that I said is, what if it was normalcy that got us in this predicament in the first place? What if doing things the normal way, what if learning what was normal and doing what was perceived as normal got us in this position in the first place? Perhaps the direction of this nation, perhaps the direction of this world was moving in a direction and moving in a way that God was not pleased with. What if the way that we are living our lives, what if the way that we are viewing our lives, what if the way that we are treating one another, what if the way that we have been acting towards one another, what if the way we were doing these normal things have been have contributed to bringing this virus to fruition in the first place? This crisis has impacted every single institution in this nation. The educational institutions we see have been impacted. Schools have been shut down. Some schools have shut down for the semester. Some schools have shut down for the rest of the year. Some schools now have students receiving instruction from home, learning remotely. Uh, but the educational institution has been impacted. Amen. The, the economic institutions have been impacted. We have seen the stock market in the past week on the verge of decline after decline after decline, and some even speculate on the verge of collapse, and the government had to inject trillions of dollars into it just so the nation could continue to function with some sort of, here's that word again, normalcy. Within our political institutions, the same issue, COVID-19, the coronavirus, has quickly become the most dominant issue discussed in the political realm as to how we as a nation and, and better yet as a world can deal with this particular virus. Amen. And dare I say, even in our religious institutions, yeah. Many church leaders and pastors have had to try to reimagine and reconfigure what it looks like to have worship in the midst of this virus outbreak. The question of when do you think things will get back to normal? I don't know when things will get back to normal, but even more importantly, I don't know if things should get back to normal. I believe that God had to put the whole world on notice. I believe that God had to do something drastic enough to get the attention of the whole world at the same exact time. Amen. Amen. Perhaps, just perhaps, we need to pause. Perhaps we as a people needed to be on pause. Perhaps God had to pause everything and give us the opportunity to stop looking everywhere else, but give us the opportunity to look toward God. There are so many trying to figure out how to cure this virus, how to contain this virus, and, and the answer to this problem. And I don't know if it's me. Maybe I'm foolish enough to believe that the cure and the answer can be found once we as a people decide to look toward God and stop looking toward everything else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The scriptures tell us that when Solomon finished building the temple, he had an awesome conversation with God and God appeared to Solomon and they began to talk and God told Solomon, if I shut up the heaven that there be no rain, if I command the locusts to devour the land, if I send a pestilence among my people, then if my people, which are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive them of their sin. And then I will heal the land. Yeah, yeah. yeah this is a familiar scriptural passage. And, and if you are a Bible studier, if you are a Bible reader, then this is not the first time you came across this passage. But, but this passage is powerful because God has told us that what we as a people need to do. God has told us what we need to do if God decides to shut up 
the heavens. If God decides to send no rain, if God commands locusts to devour the land, if he decides to, to send plagues and pestilence our way, God has already told us that what we need to do is call on God, humble ourselves, pray, and seek God's face and turn from our own wicked ways. God has given us the answer. And that's what we ought to do. The first thing is to humble yourself. Yeah, yeah. We have to understand that there is a greater power and there is a greater source of power higher than ourselves. Yeah, yeah. We got to humble ourselves. We as a society love to operate on ego and pride. Well, but sometimes ego and pride get in the way of us keeping our focus on God. Right, right. Yes, God ask us and orders us in moments like this to humble ourselves. God is saying and directing those of us who call ourselves children of God. Those of us who believe ourselves to be children of God. Children of the Most High. We are the ones who need to humble ourselves. Pray. Seek not politics. Seek not prestige. Seek not fame. Seek not fortune. But seek the face of God. We have to turn toward God. We, we have to turn toward God even when the world is looking everywhere else and looking toward everything else. We who call ourselves children of God have to humble ourselves and look toward God. Amen. We have to seek God out. And then we have to turn from our wicked ways. We are living in a time where now Wicked has become the norm. When somebody asks when will things become normal again, we have to question the legitimacy of norm. Right, right. We are living in a time where now so many wicked things have become the norm. This virus is impacting everybody. The poor, the rich, the powerful, and the neglected. This virus has infected people from all backgrounds, all economic classes, all ethnicities. This virus has shut down businesses, caused the workforce to stay home. It's caused the implementation of curfews and stay-at-home mandates. It has impacted everyone. This virus has behaved in an equalizing fashion. This virus is not acting as if it has any favorites. This virus is not acting like it wants to give a pass to anyone. This virus has impacted everyone, no matter where and who you are. As a result, when we begin to look for the solution to this problem called COVID-19, just like the problem has carried itself out in an equalizing fashion, just like the problem has moved in an equalizing fashion, the proposed solutions cannot be a solution that just seems to favor one group over the other or one person over the other. As a result, proposed solutions to solve this problem cannot be solutions that seem to favor the rich over the poor. As a result, proposed solutions to this problem cannot be solutions that seem to impact only those on top while leaving those at the bottom all alone. Isn't it a shame that it took coronavirus for many of the people to understand the importance of universal health care? Isn't it a shame that it took coronavirus for many people to understand the importance of paid sick leave? Isn't it a shame that it took coronavirus for many people to understand the importance of a living wage? Isn't it a shame that it took a virus that attacks anybody and everybody for us to understand that we have the capability and the obligation to be more humane than what we have been? The reason why we are at this point is because we have not acted compassionately towards one another. We have not acted as if we are our brothers and our sisters keeper. And I believe that God had to put the whole world on notice. I believe that God had to pause the whole world to get the world to reconsider how we look at one another and how we look at God. And I know 
It may be hard to find any good out of this. But perhaps the pause that God has put us on, perhaps this pause was necessary so that we can reassess how we are living. Perhaps the pause was necessary because we were getting too comfortable with the norm that had us moving in the wrong direction. And there are things within the norm that we really need to reconsider whether or not it needs to be a part of our lives in the first place. I don't know about you, but maybe the norm ain't right. Maybe the norm ain't good. Maybe the norm ain't of God. Maybe this pause is called coronavirus is the pause that we need to really adjust our lives so that we can truly begin to live for God and not for ourselves. Maybe coronavirus is what we needed so that we can begin to reassess the importance of one-on-one -on -one contact. Technology has brought us to a place that you can go out to dinner with somebody and still not have a conversation. You'll find more people caught up in their phones and their technology rather than that one-on-one -on -one contact. So now we're living in a time of God says, I'll take that contact from you and you have to live and sequester yourself. Maybe we have to reevaluate how we interact with one another. Maybe, just maybe, this is the pause that we need right now. Yeah, yeah. Perhaps it took coronavirus for us to see that everybody deserves to have food on our table. Perhaps it took coronavirus for us to see individuals deserve decent employment. Perhaps it took coronavirus for us to see that every child deserves a fair and a decent education. Perhaps it took
focus and our attention back on God. It took a virus for some of us to see that how we have lived, how we've been living, and how we've been moving isn't right. I know it took a virus for this nation to see that perhaps universal health care is a right. I know it took a virus for this nation to see perhaps paid sick leave should be available to all. I know it took a virus for this nation to see that perhaps universal child care, decent education for all should be available for all. It took a virus. And I don't know what's going on in your life and how it has impacted you personally. But use this time that God has the world on pause to reassess what you're doing in your life. Amen. To reassess what you are doing in your life, who is in your life, and if your life is focused on God. Amen. Jesus, his only begotten son, died so, so that you and I will have the right to everlasting life. Right, right. But you gotta accept him. And when you accept Jesus, it's not just saying you believe Jesus is the Son of God and Jesus is the Savior of the world, but it's living right. the way right. that Jesus has called us to live. It's all right to preach a good sermon, but to live a good sermon is much better. It's all right to memorize and quote scriptures, but to live right. Right. that scripture is better. It's all right to pray holy prayers and powerful prayers but to live that prayer yeah, yeah, yeah. is better right. God is the joy and the strength of my life and even in this moment I will use this time to reassess my life right. Right. to seek out God yeah. to yeah. turn from my wicked ways and then I believe God will heal the land Amen. Amen. God is good. Amen. All the time and all the time. God is good. All those who are out there watching us live, I know you may not be here personally, but you know what your relationship with Jesus Christ is. You know if you need to have a better relationship or even a relationship at all with Jesus Christ. And if that is your story, I want to encourage you, if that's your story, to continue to seek out that relationship with Jesus the Christ. Get to know him. How can you get to know him? Read that scripture. Read that word daily. Pray to God daily. Meditate on the word daily. Whether you believe it or not, you don't need to be here in this building to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. All you need right now to confess with your mouth and to believe in your heart that Jesus is the Christ. If we were to die tonight, where would your soul be? I want to thank God for this moment. And I know it may look bleak, but we thank God even in this moment for the pause so that we have a chance to reassess what it is that we are doing and what it is that we need to do. At this time, I'm gonna ask all those who are watching and all those that are here, if you can stand to your feet, we are going to move into an altar prayer and then move right into our benediction. I'm gonna ask if you could bow your heads. Most holy and everlasting Father, first we come to say thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord God, for bringing us from last week into a new week. For we know it was not by anything that we have done, but because you decided to cover us with grace and mercy and give us another chance that we are here 
this morning and we want to say thank you. Lord God, we are saying, we are asking a special prayer this morning for all of those who are impacted by this pandemic, by this outbreak of this virus, COVID-19. Lord God, we ask that you be with them, cover them. Lord God, strengthen them where they need to be strengthened. Guide the doctors who are by their side. Encourage their family who are suffering with them, Lord God. Lord God, bring them to a place where they recognize and they realize that you, God, are still on the throne and you, God, are still the answer. That within you, you are the remedy. Lord God, we're asking a special blessing on all those who may be sick. All those who are suffering with ailments in their bodies. Lord God, you know what it is that they are going through, Lord God. We are asking that you protect them, that you strengthen them and cover them. Lord God, we ask a special blessing on those essential workers who may not be able to stay at home, who have to come to work so that some sort of functionality of society continues to move forward. Bless them and bless their families, Lord God. Bless those who are right now underneath the sound of my voice, whether it be here or online somewhere, Lord God. Bless them. You know exactly what they're standing in need of. You know exactly what it is that they are going through. Bless them, Lord God, in this moment. Then, Lord God, because we don't come out of any selfish form of fashion, we are asking not that you only bless us, but in this pandemic, we ask that you bless our neighbors. Bless those who live to the left. Bless those who live to the right. Bless those who live in front and behind us. Bless all those in the household. All those in the development. All those in the town. All those in the city. All those in the state. Bless, Lord God. And then, Lord God, even in the midst of this, Give us the strength to seek your face and to seek you out. That maybe, just maybe, Lord God, while you have the world on pause, allow us, Lord God, give us the insight, give us the encouragement, and give us the knowledge and the power to see that this is still yet another opportunity to get back on one accord with you. Lord God, please be in the midst and bless those who are here in this building right now who came out to make sure that things would run to the point where we could still have service for those who are stuck in their house. Bless those who came out. Strengthen them, Lord God. And let not one grow hungry for what they have given in the midst and for and toward this service. These and all other blessings we ask in your son Jesus the Christ's name, who taught his disciples to end their prayer with the line is the kingdom, power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. 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 Let us remain standing as we now prepare for benediction, and we can all just say praise God. For those out there, sing with us. Praise God. One more blessings from Praise God from
Lord. Most Holy Heavenly Father, we thank God for all that has happened. Lord God, we thank you for the visitation of the Holy Spirit, and we pray that all that took place here today, Lord God, was pleasing in your sight. If there was anything that took place that was not pleasing, Lord God, we ask that you reveal it, expose it, so that we may remove it and never allow it to happen here again. Now, Lord God, we ask that you watch over all those who are traveling, protect them and cover them as they head back to their destinations. Our prayer is that their destinations are in the same, if not better, condition than they were when we left them, Lord God. And then, Lord God, if you bring us to a place where we can slumber and sleep tonight, we ask that you send your guardian angel by to rock us asleep. And then, Lord God, if you see fit, come by early in the morning, touch us with a finger of love, and start us on another day's journey. Now may the grace of God and the love of God and the communion with the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide within us all, both now and forevermore. Let us all sing together with the threefold amen. Amen. to look at the website or this page and we will continue to update as we move forward in this time. God bless you.